Today we're looking at the definitive best settings for Fortnite OG, ensuring that we're maximizing our FPS, reducing that latency down as much as possible, whilst also maintaining incredible quality of the visuals that have been added to this remastered Fortnite OG map that we all know and love. First things first, before we jump in game, there are some incredibly important Windows and Epic Game Store settings that we need to change in order to help with stuttering and input latency inside of Fortnite. First of all, in the Windows search bar, type in exploit and you're going to open up exploit protection. You're going to select program settings, then add program to customize, choose exact file path, and then you want to find the Fortnite folder, wherever you've got it installed. Then open that up, go to Fortnite game, go to binaries, go to Win64, and then look for Fortnite client Win64 shipping. You might not see the EXE bit on the end because your file extensions might be disabled, but you're looking for the thing which is an application. So select that one, the first one on the list, and click open. This opens up this window. You just need to scroll down to Control Flow Guard or CFG. Click on Override System Settings and then switch this to off. You just need to then click apply. You can then close out of this and we're gonna head over to the Epic Games store, click on library, and then find Fortnite in the list. For me, it's on my second page and it's near the bottom. You then wanna click the three dots on the right over here. Click on options. First thing you want to do is uncheck the box next to high resolution textures. And then the second thing you need to do is tick the box next to disable cosmetic streaming. What this setting down here is doing is stopping the fact that Fortnite actually downloads these cosmetic uh, things that you're looking at when you come in contact with them in game. And instead, it just downloads everything in one go before you start playing. So this is going to help with overall bandwidth issues. It's going to help with input latency trying to render things in as you play rather than just having it downloaded in the first place. It will unfortunately increase the overall required storage space of the game because you'll have to have all of that stuff downloaded locally at all times. But having disabled the high resolution textures, it's only six gigabytes, so definitely worth it. Once you've done this, you can then click apply and you'll likely have a little update to Fortnite to download all of those files. So let that happen and then we'll move in game to cover the in-game settings. Jumping into the in-game settings, window mode you want to have at full screen. Windows full screen might look the same as full screen and also let you alt tab a bit quicker. But in terms of input latency, full screen is your best bet. It just brings that input latency down as much as possible. So you need to have this set there. Then resolution, just make sure this is set to the native resolution of your monitor. For me, that's a 1440p or 2560 by 1440 resolution. You guys, a lot of you might still be running 1920 by 1080 or 1080p. Just make sure it's set correctly here. VSync, make sure that this is off. A lot of people will think that turning it on is good because it reduces a lot of the screen tearing you get on lower refresh rate monitors, but it also introduces a ton of input lag, so it needs to be off. For your frame rate limit, I'll give you two different options. You can either simply put this to unlimited and just reach whatever FPS you can hit and that will work fine for you. However, if you want to be a bit more tech savvy, you can put this frame rate limit to just below whatever kind of frames you end up hitting after we've gone through all the settings. This will give you a nice stable frame rate throughout, should give you a consistent input latency and feeling as you're playing. So it's up to you guys. For me, I keep it nice and simple and just keep it to unlimited. Next up is rendering mode and this is where it gets a little bit controversial. A lot of people are still recommending to just run the game on performance, make the game look horrific, and just get a load of FPS. I personally do not recommend that. Yes, you will gain some FPS, but as you follow through my settings that I go through today, we're going to be able to maintain a nice amount of FPS without performance mode and still make this original remastered map look amazing. Instead, put this to DirectX 12. This scares a lot of people off because it's a newer graphics API. It introduces a bunch of new settings down below that are really, really nice to play around with. But it does also introduce some stuttering. Luckily, that stuttering will only happen for the first five or so games that you play. So once we've dialed in our settings with DirectX 12 down below, just play out five or so games 
and the stuttering will fade away. That stuttering is due to new shaders being cached. That is how DirectX 12 works with Unreal Engine. I'm not going to go into the details of it now. Just ride it out for a few games and then you will get the best looking and smoothest experience that you can get in Fortnite. What you will need to do is apply the DirectX 12 rendering mode first, do a restart of the game, and then we can carry on with the settings below. So moving down now, brightness, I would recommend that you leave this at 100% at the moment. When we've dialed through all the settings, if you think that the game looks a little bit dark on your monitor, you can bring this up to around 115%. But for me, on my monitor, I don't have any issues just keeping this at 100. It looks perfect. User interface contrast is completely personal preference, whether you want the UI to be uh, more contrasted, have deeper colors. I just leave it at one times. Colorblind mode. For most people, you can just leave this at off and the game looks fine, especially with this new map. Some of the previous maps we've had in other seasons, you've really had to run a colorblind mode to make it look a bit more vibrant, but this OG map looks really, really nice. The only one I might recommend to people who want to get maybe some slightly different colors that still look really nice is to go to Tritonope and put the colorblind strength to around eight. This gives you a slightly different color look, slightly more vibrance in some areas, but it is personal preference. Right now, I'm just going to run this at off, keep this at five, and just leave it at that. Then motion blur, make sure this is disabled. Now time for the scary but fun bit, the graphics quality settings. So auto set quality, we don't need to run this. We're going to be dialing it in manually. Quality presets, you can set this at whatever. It will turn to custom when we start changing things below. Then we've got anti-aliasing and super resolution. I still see a load of people running this at off to just get, I guess, crisper visuals, but you are just leaving so much FPS on the table. All of these settings in here past TAA so all of these super resolution settings, either NVIDIA DLSS or the TSR options, these all give a lovely amount of FPS as long as you dial in the correct one based on your resolution. So this is what you're going to want to do. If you have an NVIDIA card, you're going to use NVIDIA DLSS. If you have an AMD graphics card, you're going to use TSR Epic. I've got an NVIDIA card, so I'm using DLSS. The next setting is then determined by what your resolution of your monitor is. If you have a 1080p monitor, which a lot of people have, you want to set this to quality. This will be the same whether you're running DLSS or whether you're running uh, TSR Epic. You see there's a quality setting in both. If you have a 1440p monitor, like I do, you actually want to drop this down to balanced because the initial resolution you've got is already better so you can run a lower temporal super resolution or lower NVIDIA DLSS setting and it will still look great. So for me, I'm going to come back to DLSS, turn this to balanced because I'm running at 1440p. Hopefully that makes sense. 3D resolution you can't set when you've got these super resolution values set up here. Same thing with dynamic resolution being disabled as well, so we'll ignore both of those. Then we've got Nanite Virtualized Geometry. This is one of the settings that we wouldn't have had if we weren't set to DirectX 12, and we definitely want to have this on. It says that it improves geometry detail but can lower frame rate. Just turning Nanite on without doing anything else down below actually has very little effect on FPS and it makes the game overall look a ton better with that much better rendered geometry on the new map. So make sure that this is set to on. Next one is Virtual Shadows. There's a couple of different recommendations I could give for this. If you are just really, really hungry for FPS, you can turn the shadows off here. It will make the game look overall a lot flatter. Having no shadows in the game isn't really a competitive advantage. People can't really hide in shadows too much in Fortnite, but you will gain some nice FPS having these off. I personally am testing between medium and high. They do look pretty similar. Doesn't seem to have much impact on FPS going between the two. So I'm running them at high at the moment. I'd recommend if you like shadows that you try out high as well. Global illumination. Once again, if you just want crazy FPS or you're just running on a slightly lower system and need the FPS, put this to off and just don't have any global illumination. But if you're running a pretty solid system and you've got your DLSS or TSR set up here, you can afford to turn on Lumen, which is a new high quality real time global illumination that's brought in from the latest Unreal Engine. And this makes the game look incredible. This is one of the secret source settings. 
but it does cost a decent amount of FPS. So this is going to be the one where you're either going to run it off or you're gonna run it at lumen high, and that's gonna be up to you. Test both out and see which one you prefer. For reflections, we're gonna put these on lumen high as well. However, these do not have anywhere near as big an impact on FPS as global illumination. So I'd recommend pretty much everyone run these on high uh, just to get that nice extra bit of quality in game for pretty much no FPS loss. For your view distance, you can bring this to far. This tends to give you the best vision of item drops, guns, uh, potions and stuff that have been dropped quite far away. Uh, so there is a competitive advantage to having this on. That means you can spot maybe like a legendary drop that someone's left over somewhere far away. Do not start bringing this down too near. You completely miss out on all that information. Textures have very little effect on FPS. They're pretty much based on how much VRAM your card has. If you are starting to stutter a bit more than you'd like, or you are losing a bit more FPS and you've turned some other settings down, then you can start bringing textures down to low. But for most people, I would just run this at high. It makes everything on the screen, all the textures of walls and buildings and objects all look a lot, lot better, adds a lot of clarity to the game and has little to no effect on FPS. So leave this at high. Effects are pretty much pointless in terms of competitive advantage from having them turned up and they do have quite a lot of effect on FPS so turn them to low and then post-processing I would leave on high it just overall makes the game look a lot better uh, without much effect on FPS whatsoever so high is a pretty good option hardware ray tracing a lot of you guys won't even see this if you don't have the right hardware to support it but even if you can never turn this on this is going to absolutely kill your FPS it'll make the game look really really nice but yeah definitely not worth it leave this off last couple of settings in here show fps turn this on this way when we start playing around with settings in the game seeing what works well for you you can actually see what those effects are on the fps use gpu crash debugging and latency markers leave both of those off nvidia reflex low latency you want to have at on or on plus boost the choice of which one you pick in order to get the lowest latency and the overall best performance is dependent on how strong your gpu and your cpu are in comparison to each other if you have a much stronger gpu in your system and maybe an older cpu then on plus boost is the best setting a lot of people do run this because they might have, you know, budget gaming PCs where they've just got a kind of good enough CPU and they've put more money into the GPU. However, if you have a bit more of a sophisticated system or any system where the GPU and the CPU are a bit more on par with each other, on will give you better results. If you don't know which scenario you're in, just test both of these out over a few games and see which one feels better. You might not notice any specific FPS variations, but it will affect input latency as you're playing the game. And lastly in here, report performance stats, keep this disabled. Now there's a couple of extra settings I'd recommend changing on other tabs. First one is in the game tab. Just scroll on down to replays and disable recording replays as well as large team replays. These, as it says on the right, Right, do actually affect performance because you are recording something it's taking up hard drive space as well if you want to record replays of your game just run some sort of recording software or a clipping software the only reason you should have replays on is if you're specifically using it for some sort of content or something if you're a content creator which a lot of people aren't so keep them off and the last thing i'd recommend is to come over to the audio settings and turn on visualize sound effects this honestly is such a broken setting what it does is it adds a radial indicator to the screen where when any sounds happen in the game like chests making their glimmering sound if you can't find them or footsteps or gunshots you see it on a radial wheel which shows you which direction that thing is happening in and the craziest thing about it is that it seems to visualize sounds that you can't even hear in your headset at that time like maybe you're a bit too far away or they're behind a couple of walls or something it is so broken so make sure you've got this on now that we've got all of that dialed in you can come down here click apply restart your game and you will have the best Fortnite experience on the OG map that you can possibly have what I'd recommend that you do next is go and watch this video where I detail through all of the current best Nvidia control panel settings that will take your overall performance of not only Fortnite but any game you play to the next level.